Hello, my name is Michael Lambert, and uh, today I want to talk about some of the stories that have been in the uh, in the news in the last week or so. And I, I also want to talk a little bit about Sunak's future because, uh, in my view, as I'll explain later, I don't think he's going to last beyond May. He certainly won't last till the till the general election. Before I do that, I would just like to thank uh, all those of you who were kind enough to watch my video last week uh, from Navarra in, in Italy, and in particular, uh, those who were kind enough to send me some money. I, I really appreciate it very much indeed. And it does mean that I will now be able to go and make some 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 more uh, uh, videos from other cities within the the evil empire to show how you know how bad things are there and how you know how by comparison how well things are going here now that we now that the plan is working. Now I wanted to just start with uh, the Frank, uh, the charming Frank Hester. Um, Frank is the guy who, uh, uh, as you will know, uh, uh, said of Diane Abbott that the sight of her made him want to hate all black women and that he thought she should be shot. Now, uh, uh, Frank, as it happens, had given £10 million to the Tory party, but uh, it, it, nothing much happened to begin with. And then in due course, various ministers, in particular Kevin Hollenrake and, uh, and Mel Stride, were sent round the television studios to say, that, 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 saying that the sight of a black woman uh, made you want to hate all black women. It was not racist, not, definitely not racist. It was rude. And indeed, the charming Frank, he did actually say afterwards that he, he apologised for being rude, but not, not, not for his remarks. And uh, and in due course, as, uh, as uh, I think people became more and more incredulous at this uh, denial of it being a racist remark, uh, Kebby Badenoch, who was obviously thinking about her leadership chances, she got up and said it was racist. And then, of course, our follower, uh, um, Rishi Sunak, he thought, oh, we better get in behind this then. So he then came out and said it was racist as well. Um, but But... Uh, um, Frank kindly apologised. He gracefully apologised. He didn't say he was apologised for being racist. He said apologised for being rude. He thought it was rude. So, uh, so that was all fine then. And it was a question of what about the uh, the ten million pounds that Frank had given to the Tories, uh, and the possibly the five million that was on its way as well. And uh, well, the Tories are obviously short of money. They probably spent it all. And who 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 else is going to give the Tories any money unless they get some benefit uh, uh, right now? Because it's pretty obvious they're going to lose the the election and uh, uh, so it was said that uh, uh, the line was that because he he said sorry uh, for being rude that that they were going to keep the the, the the 10 million let me tell you something about frank because he's got a business it's called tpp and he supplies software to the to the nhs in particular his turnover is something like about 18 million pounds a year frank owns the whole business 100% is his and his profit on that before tax is, is about 50% he makes about 40 million pounds a year profit uh, from his contract with the nhs and so it probably probably serves um, serves uh, frank's interest to 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 keep him with the the Tory party with the government um, there's no suggestion whatsoever that anybody ever said look um, you know you give us 10 million pounds and we'll keep the con you can keep the contract or or uh, or uh, Frank would have said I'll give you 10 million pounds if you give it a but that would never have happened because that would have been that would have been corrupt but anyway uh, as it is the Tories are keeping keeping the money because he said sorry and then the matter's all over Rwanda now uh, this is going on and on and on. It does look as though it's possible that sometime later in the year a plane is going to take off. If they can find an airline that'll take them because most airlines apparently have, uh, uh, have refused. I think they're talking now about using RAF planes. But anyway, I think it's generally agreed now that it's going to cost £500 million to send uh, uh, 300 people to, to Rwanda. That's a cost of £1.7 million per, per person. And that's going to stop the boats. And uh, I, I think most of us can agree that at a time when, when there are, are, are children can barely afford to eat all over the country in, in, in many, many areas and, 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 and people are absolutely desperate, that spending £1.7 million per person to send 300 people to Rwanda is money well spent. Excellent idea. It won't actually work as a, as, as a deterrent at all. It's extremely unlikely to. Uh, the day after... Uh, uh, Sunak was crowing about how uh, boat crossings were down. We had a record number uh, of crossings that was last week. Education. Um, between fees and uh, 
fewer students coming from the EU post-Brexit and cracking down on, uh, on, on, on visas whereby uh, dependents can't come uh, to the UK to study, uh, universities are in a bit of a, a, bit of a bind. Uh, they reckon that uh, uh, the drop in, there's going to be something like a 37% drop in, uh, in, in foreign students. And that means that they're going to have to cut places. They're going to have to cut places for British students and uh, uh, for foreign students. So it's, it's really a squeeze on the uh, on the universities. Now, I wanted to talk a little bit about about fees because it doesn't get a lot of publicity. And I just wanted to tell you, I did a little bit of research to see what other other countries uh, uh, charge in terms of uh, uh, tuition fees. Now, bearing in mind that you know we, as you as you as you will know, we're going to become a you know, a, a, a sort of high tech, high wage, high skilled uh, superpower, and, and that we're going to need people to go to university and to study uh, computer studies and so on. And, and, and you know, education is going to be really, really, really important. This is what other countries, uh, just the ones I could find, uh, charge in terms of uh, tuition fees. Um, Austria, nothing. Belgium, £775 a year. Denmark, nothing. Finland, nothing. France charges £145 a year. I'm not sure what that's for. Germany, nothing. Ireland, nothing. Norway, nothing. Spain, they charge up to £1,800. Sweden, nothing. Switzerland charges up to £1,070. The Netherlands charges £880. Scotland charges up to £1,820. And the UK charges approximately £9,000. I mean, people come out of university, and by the time they've got borrowed money for accommodation as well, they come out with debts of £50,000. I mean, what a huge millstone and, and disadvantage that is for any students. And what a deterrence to actually wanting to go and study. And of course, they'll, they'll, they'll tell you, oh, no, 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 we're doing fantastic. Our university is fantastic. We've got two of them, two or three of the top 10 universities in the world. That's true. We've got an awful lot of not very good universities charging huge, huge, huge amounts of money to students who are going to be burdened with the debts for some of them for the rest of their lives. On the trade and uh, economy front, um, uh, in terms of the trade deals, you know, and we, we, we broke away from the evil empire in order to uh, to, to do all these deals. Um, the, the, the deal with India has been uh, delayed now for the 14th time and obviously isn't going to happen any time soon. Uh, the deal with Canada, uh, they, they say they're not negotiating anymore. Bad Knox says she's still negotiating, so I don't know who she's negotiating with. But you remember the big the big deal was the one with Australia, the huge deal whereby um, we had this uh, free trade uh, uh, deal with them. Uh, and since that deal, which was May of last year, they've sent us 1,700 tonnes of, of beef. And uh, in return, going the other way to, to sort of balance it out, we sent a, a shipment of, um, of beef jerky. Uh, um, but it was refused. They wouldn't, they wouldn't accept it. KPMG, the big accountancy firm, they said that uh, increasing divergence between UK and EU rules in the wake of uh, Brexit remained a major issue for British firms doing business in Europe. In other words, you know, we want to do things differently because we're now free to do things differently, but it doesn't suit our market, it doesn't suit the customers, and so it's therefore much more complicated, much more difficult, and much more unnecessary bureaucracy involved. Bloomberg's, they said, by almost every economic and financial measure, parting ways with the EU almost eight years ago has been disastrous for the UK. The EU GDP, this is according to Bloomberg's, has advanced 24% since 2016, whereas the UK GDP has advanced 6%. And then on things like uh, travel. Spain, apparently the Spanish government, uh, uh, they've given advice to British travellers that uh, in future, uh, Brits and others, uh, non-EU passport holders, uh, must, before they go to Spain, have proof of their accommodation. Otherwise, you have to get your hotel accommodation and uh, some sort of proof that you've booked it. Or if you're staying with some friends, you have to get a letter of invitation. It's like when you used to go to China, I know you probably still do have to, where they wanted all this all this paperwork, all this hassle. And uh, 
uh, and, and you have to have an invitation letter from yes, for whoever you're going to stay with, if you're going to stay with somebody. And according to the Daily Express, um, those who are no, not prepared to or not able to provide this information are allowed to be fined up to £8,000 or sent home. And then sort of tourism the other way. I mean, bearing in mind all these things are, are, are really uh, uh, mostly uh, Brexit related. Previously, when we were members of the EU, anybody from within the EU could come to the UK with an ID card. Now, throughout the EU, people got ID cards. And uh, they don't really need passports unless they're going to leave the EU. But there's so many countries, there are 27 countries to travel around in the, uh, in the EU. So, so most people get, get, get by uh, with ID cards, especially children and, and, and youngsters. But we decided, no, we won't accept ID cards and we want passports, please. If you want to come here, get the passport. And uh, it, the result of this is that, to, 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 according to the government, uh, more than 200 million potential visitors from Europe uh, have ID cards but not passports and uh, the government's forecast is that uh, this will lose us 890,000 visits by European citizens each year and the financial cost will be uh, 590 million pounds. Well we don't really want them coming here anyway do we so it's probably not a, not, not a bad thing but anyway uh, uh, you know shrink the economy a little bit more. As far as farming is concerned, uh, uh, you know, farmers have lost the ability to, to uh, trade freely with the EU, uh, anything we send, and 90% of our food exports go to the EU. Uh, uh, everything is now clogged up in, in paperwork on arrival and, and extra expense and delays and so on, so it, it's making it very much more difficult. Whereas uh, food coming into the country, just come in, you know, because we don't have any controls at the moment. We, we may be having some controls at some stage. Um, I heard today, actually, there was a report that uh, in uh, Portsmouth, um, the government spent 17 million, Portsmouth Council spent 7 million, a total of 24 million pen, pounds was spent on a big reception centre where lorries, 80 lorries, I think it was 80 or 90 lorries a day would be checked um, as they arrived. Um, but they've just as decided that they've changed the rules and, and it'll only be three or four lorries a day and, and, and the building's well, redundant really. But it's, it doesn't matter, it's always public money, isn't it? You know, to, what, 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 what does it matter? And uh, farmers are having trouble. They, they they can't get they can't get workers. They've lost all their uh, uh, you know the, the the grants they used to get from the EU and so on. So a lot of them are struggling. A lot of them being persuaded to uh, to to to, uh, to wild over their farms and so on. And uh, there's going to be a sh as I keep saying every week there's going to be a shortage of food. And uh, this is going to leave us open to uh, to being helped to ransom. We've got no control of the quality of the food that's coming. We've got no control at all. So I mean, food is a big big problem. As I say, I keep keep mentioning it. Mental health, uh, apparently uh, our plan's working so well that according to the Global Mind Project UK, which is a, a, a survey where they interview 400,000 people in 71 con con countries, we, we uh, in Britain are the, are the second most unhappy in the world after Uzbekistan. Uh, I mean, we're now getting very poor. Um, with the sixth richest nation in, in the world, and yet there are 12 million people living in absolute poverty. That's to say they have less than 60% of the, the median income, uh, and that includes uh, millions of children. And uh, uh, this has gone up 600,000 in, in the last year, of which 300,000 were children. It's the biggest increase in poverty in, in, in 40 years. But the plan's working, the plan's working. And uh, and so it goes on. I mean, every day you just find more and more stories of of, of, of how uh, how things are going bad in this country. And uh, you know, as we've said before, you know, everybody's so negative, everybody's so de depressed by it all, and, and and so anxious because there is no light at the end of the tunnel. You know, since we've left the EU, since we've become poorer, uh, we are just destined to struggle. And. Uh, uh, it's our Prime Minister, isn't it, Sunak? Um, it's he I wanted to talk about a little bit. I've talked about him in previous videos and I've been quite rude about him, but this is a man who's got... He should never be Prime Minister. Uh, you know, seeing him bouncing about, talking about his plan is working. Nobody knows what his plan is. What, what is the plan is working? You know, I thought it's a bit like this, you know. It's a bit like 
somebody who's a, a football manager and, and, and he gets a, a really big job uh, for a big football uh, team and he's he's the manager and yet everybody knows that he doesn't know anything about football and all the team they know that he ain't got a clue what he's doing uh, and they're all looking at each other and taking no notice of him uh, and just wishing he'd go away and all the supporters absolutely hate him because they keep losing because they're so useless and yet all the time all he says I've got a plan I've got a plan and his plan is to score more goals that's the plan you know grow the economy but this man you know he's He's just awful. He's got no charm. He's got no empathy, no compassion, no style, no credibility. He's got no wit, no wisdom, no subtlety, no humility, no grace, no sense of humour. Can you imagine him telling a joke? He's just a dull accountant. And that's what he should have stayed. Uh, and he has, above all, he has absolutely no political ability whatsoever. No political antenna. Antenna. He just doesn't know what he's doing. He just doesn't know how to read the room, or, or, or the country for that matter. Constantly making gaffes. And he's touchy. He's touchy. He gets really cross in a bit, criticise him. And, and his, his understanding of how to portray himself as at least competent is so lacking, it's so hopeless. Yet, for example, last week... He ordered a helicopter, RAF helicopter, probably that big black expensive one that cost £50 million. He ordered that helicopter to go from Northart, that's just outside London, 210 miles to his house in York, and to take him from there to Coventry, 145 miles, where he gave a speech. It was really a, it was really a, 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 you know, a party thing. It was a, a electioneering, really. But anyway, he gave a speech. The speech, I've watched it, lasted seven minutes. He then stayed there for about another ten minutes where he asked, th- answered three questions. And then he gets off on it. And, and, and he thinks that's OK. He thinks people will accept that. It's just so, so stupid. It's just so, so utterly, utterly out of touch. Uh, and you know things like I mean I can list them. There's that betting Piers Morgan on television and shaking some of the thousand pound bet as to whether or not he's going to get planes to Rwanda, uh, and joking about trans women in the in the Commons when when that uh, Rihanna Gay's mother was in the public gallery and and, and HS2 and the, in his H, his autumn fiscal event which had absolutely no effect whatsoever, and uh, uh, the budget fell flat as well, didn't it? Two p off NHI and everybody knows that that, that because the thresholds are not being changed, everybody's pay, paying more anyway, and, and this endless crap about his five pledges utter crap you know we never heard anything about them taking blame when when uh, inflation was 11 percent. but that's all come down it's all down to him i i think the whole world should be congratulating him on getting international uh, 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 gas and electricity prices down uh, i mean it's just just ridiculous uh, and all the time we can all see with our own eyes how badly everything is doing uh, and, and how stretched everybody is financially and how prices are going up and how nobody can afford anything and he just goes on making one mistake after another if you look at his record as chancellor everybody says oh he's good good as a chancellor that's why he became prime minister he's so good at giving away money look at his uh, failing to 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 insure against uh, interest rates rises that cost us 11 billion it's only taxpayers money so it doesn't matter uh, the ETA to help out I mean what a fiasco that was absolutely ridiculous uh, uh, and did more harm than good and look at his bounce back loads I've mentioned them several times before it was just a, just an invitation to fraud it's an invitation to every crook in the country go online and get yourself £50,000 or do it several times to get more than £50,000 uh, and he presided over all this writing out the checks for all the PPE and the track and trace and uh, uh, and uh, HS2, cancelling HS2, and then selling off all that land that lost another hundred million pounds. And look at the the, the Lee Anderson affair, whereby uh, uh, Lee Anderson said that uh, uh, Sadiq Khan was uh, had given London over to Islamists who who are now controlling things, and how he he, he refused to re, to 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 uh, uh, to apologise, uh, and how very very reluctantly, eventually Sunak had to uh, had to withdraw the whip, and uh, and Lee Anderson went off to. To reform, you know, he's, a, he's a follower, not a not a leader. It's just endless, endless uh, misjudgments. 
Uh, and with all that's going on, when you look around at how desperately serious, almost every department of government has got crises uh, and the economy is doing so badly and all he goes on incessantly about is these, these boats, these little boats. And as I said before, it's not going to make any difference sending a handful of people to, to Rwanda. Uh, we've got 150,000 people waiting for their uh, uh, their uh, applications to be uh, uh, dealt with by the Home Office and almost all, all of them will, will be allowed to remain. We've got people coming across in little boats at the rate of what, 40 or 50,000 a year or something and he's going to send 300 to Rwanda and he thinks that's going to stop people. I mean, just think about it. The chances of your of your being sent to Rwanda when you come across are probably one in a hundred or less. I mean, it's not a deterrent. And he looks so stupid when he talks about the benefits of, of Brexit. He talks about seizing the opportunities of Brexit. I mean, we all know, everybody knows that Brexit is an utter disaster. Everyone knows it. The only people now in favour of, uh, 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 of Brexit or think they can make a go of it are him, Sunak, Starmer and, uh, uh, and the crazies in the Reform Party. But this is why I don't think he's going to last until the election. Uh, we've got the uh, May elections coming up, beginning of May, 2nd of May. Uh, the last time these seats were up for, for grabs was uh, in, in 2021. It was the, uh, the, the post-Covid uh, time. And uh, Johnson was at his, at his prime. And the Tories did extremely well. So even if we hadn't got all this chaos around us, the Tories would likely have not done very well in these elections anyway. But because of what's going on, it's going to be catastrophic for, for, for the Tories. And he, he will have no excuse for that whatsoever. And uh, I think, uh, as far as Rwanda is concerned, I think it's going to go on being an embarrassment. And he's going to look more and more foolish the more he goes on about it and about how everyone can see what bad value for money it is. And incidentally, Channel 4 News, they've been uh, uh, interviewing people who've come here as uh, as asylum seekers from Rwanda because they say it's not safe there and more and more this is this is going to become a, a, a story of failure rather than success and uh, we've got the interim Covid inquiry report coming up which is likely to criticise him for particularly for, for refusing to hand over his uh, his whatsapp messages uh, and and I think everything is there's a sort of momentum going now where everything is going wrong. Everything he does, because his judgment's so bad, because he has no authority, nobody takes him seriously, nobody likes him, his fellow MPs don't like him, his cabinet don't like him, the country doesn't like him, nobody likes him. Uh, and so things will go on because people are not wishing him well, people are not willing him to do well. And I think what's going to happen is uh, come the middle of May when things have deteriorated even more, uh, the Tories, uh, many of whom are just not going to stand again anyway, they've already said they're going to, going, to, going to call it a day and who can blame them. But those who want to stay on are going to say, look, you know, we can't do any worse than, uh, than, than Sunak. Uh, things are, are uh, so bad and they're probably going to go on getting worse. It's best to, 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 to dump him. Why not get somebody else in to, to have a go? It, it, it can't be worse. And I think that's the point at which the, the letters will go in there'll be a, a, a vote and uh, and he'll be out but we'll see we'll see um but but right now i mean everywhere you look it's just uh, it's just chaos it's just absolutely hopeless anyhow that's what i think about it and uh, if you watch this far thank you very much indeed and until next week uh, bye for now <laughs>